And Meldrick Taylor is also on today's card as there are four Olympians featured on this card in Norfolk, Virginia. But Mark Breland has looked extremely impressive as he ends his confrontation today with a first round knockout. We'll be right back. Live shot, you're looking at Pernell Whitaker, and we have told you about his fight, which you'll be seeing live. And also, there's Meldrick Taylor getting loose. And uh, since we do have time to show you Taylor's fight, he'll be taking on Roberto Medina, and we'll also be watching that one, which will be coming to you live from Norfolk, Virginia. Taylor, a very good-looking young lightweight. But the man of the hour here in Norfolk is the hometown hero, Pernell Whitaker, the lightweight champion at the Los Angeles Olympic Games. Very interesting young fella, a man who has begun his professional career in undefeated fashion. And we're going to take a closer look at a man who will be putting his unbeaten mark on the line against John Senegal. A look at Pernell Whitaker up close and personal. The greatest achievement for an amateur athlete, especially a boxer, is to win an Olympic gold medal. Last summer, Pernell Whitaker reached that emotional high, and one year later, the memories are still vivid. I don't think I can ever come off that high. I reached so high to get the gold that, you know, I, I can't fall because I have it around my neck, and I have it at home. So that I will always remain on top. You know, if not successful as a pro, I can always look back at my gold medal and say, this was my really, my, really my dream. A key element of Whitaker's success has been the support of his hometown, Norfolk, Virginia. It seemed as if half the city turned out to welcome him home from Los Angeles. Norfolk resembles a small, close-knit community. The pride and affection they show is genuine. And that was inspiring to me because I wasn't expecting to see as many people as I saw on a weekday. You know, and it seems like Holding off was was attending, and I feel great. It's only about 200 yards from the Scope Arena to the housing projects of Young Park, where Pete Whitaker grew up. Because of his early professional success, Whitaker has been able to give back time and money to help his old neighborhood. Now he lives across town in a brand new house he bought for his mother and the rest of his family. About the time they moved in, Pete's son was born. And as evidenced here, the family is right there when Whitaker trains this close to home. But training and fighting in your hometown means extra promotional responsibilities. It can be distracting to take time out to sign autographs at a local mall or stage a public workout by the waterfront. But he's willing to pay that price to do what he has to to succeed as a professional and get a shot at a title. That's all I'm, I'm breathing, breathing fire, I'm, you know. I'm going to stay in the gym and keep learning and keep learning until I succeed and down the road of winning the title or getting the title shot. So whatever I have to do to do that, or however long it takes me to do it, I'll do that. Now live, you'll watch the entrance of Fernell Whitaker here at the Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. He gets set to make his way out from the catacombs into the bright lights and on his way toward the ring where he'll be taking on John Senegal. A lot of people feel of the Olympic medalist, Whitaker would be the most talented. And he's done really nothing to dispel that theory through his professional career to this point, which admittedly is early on, but there's even talk of Whitaker fighting for a title within 12 to 18 months. Sweet Pea, as he's known. They've called him that since he was a kid. Pernell Whitaker making his way to the ring, the only Olympian to win his gold medal via the knockout round. Everybody else went the three-round distance and won on a decision. It was Whitaker with a KO, and Whitaker will be looking for a KO as well today. Into the ring comes Fernell. Ready to take on John Supersonic 
Senegal. And we'll return to ABC's wide world of sports after this message and a word from our local stations. back live in Norfolk, Virginia is the site. Our live coverage continuing. I'm laughing because one of the great chants of all time. Sweet pea, sweet pea, sweet pea. They've been chanting here at the skull, but that's the nickname of their man, Colonel Pete Whitaker. He is being introduced at the moment. Came in at 136 pounds. That's one pound over the lightweight limit. Ring announcer putting everything he has into that introduction. The opponent is John Senegal. He's home now in Port Arthur, Texas. He comes in with a record of 22 one and one, 17 knockouts, and his only loss was to Terrence Ali in 1984 in Atlantic City. Second round knockout. Lou Duva involved with Freeland and Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor as well, so he's back in the corner. Tail of the tape right there. Not much difference as far as the height and reach are concerned. One pound difference in the weight. Senegal 23 years old. And Ernell Whitaker, 21 years old. The referee is Al Rothenberg. He does not score. Oscar Bryan, Jim Trailer, and Ernie Green are the judges at ringside scoring on the 10-point plus system. Whitaker with very quick hands, good punching power, great foot speed, exceptional boxing skills. Left-hander from Norfolk. Senegal also, his trademark, good hand speed. Could be a tough test for him. Good combination puncher. And an impressive record against some decent opposition. Whitaker trying to stay unbeaten. Trying to go 5-0. and oh. Second time he has fought as a professional here in Norfolk. Whitaker using that right here in round one to try to establish the early tempo. Then the left hand. Tried to cross with it. Partially blocked by Senegal. No damage. of course, will respond to everything thrown by Whitaker. One thing that will do, of course, is make it difficult for Senegal, if this fight goes the distance, and it's scheduled for eight rounds, to win a decision. Always tough in a close fight to come into a man's hometown and beat him, especially in a case like this. looking 
into the wrong space, looking toward the wrong ring post. But he's able to get up and get back as he gets stunned and staggered at the end of round one. Left uppercut and a left hand to the head, a left to the top of the head, sends Senegal to the canvas. From another angle, we'll take a look at it. Whitaker, that short left hand. And again, it was really more of a, a combination there than any one punch that did it. One sets up the other. And there is Senegal in his corner. So Freeland ended his fight in the first round. Whitaker, perhaps inspired by that performance, and no doubt watching it on a monitor in his dressing room, 